It's recording now, right? Yes. Say something and see if it works. Testing one, two, three. Yes, he should be working. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Todd Congo, 3 Accident Podcast. How are you today? Hey, 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 hey. hey, good, eh? Man, I'm just coming back from all sorts of exciting stuff. Goodness me, I have stories for you. Luscious sized stories. Uh, stories about riding in a plane with your own little cabin. Yes, Fancy Pants Lane is where I was. But we'll get to those later. There's so much going on. So just if you're doing calendars and you're thinking ahead, Couple dates I'll give you just because they're worth. I'll talk more about this, I'm sure. But there's another open workshop with Human Performance Fundamentals and uh, Bob Edwards Learning Team, and then probably a fatality um, workshop, the Safety to Fatality Prevention Stuff Workshop, and that's going to be hosted by Luminant, um, the the Power Guys. Uh, you know them. You know Charles Major and the gang, Wes, the whole gang, Barry. You've heard them before. They're gonna. It's they. They want to do a class and they want to open it up to people. They said it would be great because they want the, the interchange, but which is cool, right? So that'll be March uh, 26, 27, and twenty eight, and then one little one before there, just in case you're wondering. Shane Bush and I are doing a workshop where we talk about uh, human performance and sustainability in an organization, and it's just we're going to tap into Shane's head and his brain because he's been doing this a long time. And uh, so it'll be a kind of workshop where we just kind of sit around and discuss it, sort of sharpening the saw kind of activity. It should be fun. You're more than welcome to come. The uh, The requirement for that workshop is that you 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 probably ought to have a pretty good background in the new view and human performance and safety differently because we're not going to start with a fundamentals discussion. It'll start pretty high up, and it'll really kind of be led by what it is you think we need to talk about. So we'll we'll set the agenda Uh, In the meeting. And then the following day, that's in Denver on the 6th and 7th of February. Following day, we're going to do a deep dive learning class, uh, I think. That looks like it's going to make it. So if you want to go to any of those, office Todd Conklin, all one word, at gmail.com, we can set you up. That's good. Let's jump into today's podcast, even though I got so much crap to tell you. God, I got a lot to tell you. But uh, so things good, things are good. I mean, life's grand and everything's don't have any bad things to tell you. Thank goodness. Um, but today's podcast is, is kind of, so we did this workshop in Atlanta a couple weeks ago and Bob and I sat down in the lobby afterward and just did a quick after action review and we recorded it. And I think you'll find it kind of interesting. So that, that's, that's what this podcast is going to have today is a, it's a discussion with really Bob Edwards about learning how organizations learn, and a little bit about the workshop. So sit back and enjoy. This will be kind of fun. Here it is. This is Bob Edwards and myself, Todd Conklin, chitty-chatting about um, our workshop in Atlanta. Here it goes. So, Bob, what do you think we just did a workshop? Holy cow. So what is this, our fourth, third or fourth? Yeah, yeah, third or fourth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just think they keep getting better and better. What was what was good about this one? I think the conversations are getting deeper, right? The people that are doing this and the ones that are, so it was kind of cool. We did uh, we did fundamentals, which is some people that had never seen this stuff before. We did learning teams to kind of build more skill around that, right? And and, and confidence, confidence, and confidence. And then we did this fatality thing you, you led today. And it's like people are I mean they're, they're walking out scratching their head thinking wow we hadn't thought about like we haven't thought about it like this before which is good and and one thing I thought was really cool is like you didn't provide a bunch of answers you provided a lot of sort of shift in thinking sort of challenges which I thought was good yeah that shift for um, fatalities is interesting because it's really a shift away from prevention towards control yeah which I think is hard it was a really interesting it's kind of a hard sell today yeah. I mean not a hard sell but it's a hard thing for people to, to wrap think about. their brain yeah, yeah yeah because yeah yeah for, I mean for all the reasons they mentioned in there right and some of these things feel like a control at the same time that they're preventing and yeah so it was good really good and great people and the diversity of the different companies represented, and I think is also good. And then also, I think all that sharing of like, you know, everybody's sharing with each other during breaks. You, you walk around during breaks and you hear people talking about the same stuff that we've been talking about. So I think that's a good sign too. Yeah, I think that's a really good sign. So what have you been up to? Tell me what's going on in your life. So I'm remodeling this 1987 Ski Supreme. Oh, you mean talk about how? No, I, I'm pretty <laughs> curious about the Ski Supreme. That's yeah. a boat, right? That's yeah, a boat. That is a boat. Um, 
So one of the things that's been interesting to me is to see more and more capacity being built in organizations, to, which is what you and I said from the beginning, we can't do all this, there's no way. We have to have more like internal capacity to do this and it's really exciting as we're working with some of these organizations and companies to see them create their version of what all we're doing here and then teaching people internally to carry this message forward. And I know you and Sydney say you don't really throw eggs that much anymore because people are all more receptive to your message and to this whole message, but it's still really new. It's still, like it's not the new social norm. It's not baked into our DNA yet, but I think we're beginning to see enough people talking about it and wanting it that it will start to become uh, more normal and less of a uh, sort of new thing. How does an organization kind of start the learning process? I mean, if you, because you, you've been doing this a long time now, because uh, you're quite old. I mean, you're, <laughs> in fact, true. I'm trying not to use the word elderly, but it's the <laughs> word I think of when I think of you. Yes. Elderly. Uh, so, I, I mean, I think the thing that we've found just from trying this stuff out a bunch is that we we have to make sure that that leadership actually wants it, right? They, they want it, they're interested in it, they're willing for for us to help their organization learn, but then when we learn, we gotta be ready for what we're about to learn. How do you do that? How do you create the, 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 the desire, the pull um, or whatever it's called? To show them something different. I mean, if you show them the difference between sort of traditional, what I would call traditional investigations with uh, you know sort of the causes and the you know, all the traditional things, and here's my corrective actions, and that stuff helped us some for sure. But when they start to see that Really, failure is a lot more complex than we were given it credit for. And oh, by the way, success looks remarkably similar to failure, except for the outcome. And when they start to see that and value it, you know, it, we say this all the time. And back in the day, we'd say, well, if you don't measure, it won't get done. Well, okay, I get that, except you know how I feel about metrics. What I'm seeing is as they value things, like when you value learning, right, when it becomes a core value that we learn, then leadership aren't asking as much about what is your answer as they are, what is the understanding? And when we gain a deeper understanding, and you say this all the time, Todd, the answers, solutions, it's not that they write themselves, but they become very apparent. Yeah, they're, they're certainly self-evident, right? Yeah. So how do you get that access to leadership? How do you do it? That's a big question. People ask me that all the time. A lot of it's, I think, peer-to-peer, -peer, right? From the one business to the other. Some of these senior yeah. leaders that have seen this and yeah. done this, talking to someone else. and Because, I mean, if I mean, goodness knows, you and I are not event planners, and we're certainly not businessmen or marketing. Yes. We, have, we suck at yes, marketing. Too. So, I mean, most of what we see happening is people say, hey, this is helping us. And then somebody else says, well, let's give it a try here. So what's your approach with leaders? What, what do you do? So walk me through. If you meet a leader for the first time, what would you do? Um, well, I'd shake their hand because I think it's a polite thing to do. <laughs> okay, maybe we we'll start a little past that. A little, okay, just a yeah. little past that. So, uh, so sit down. Leader, yeah, right, right. Is this a leader that's interested in this? That said, "Hey, tell me what this stuff's about." Yeah, I think that's a, yeah, that's yeah. a really good way to go with that. Um, I, so, the thing that I would tell them if I have just a few minutes to kind of get their attention is: is are they, are they satisfied? You know, do they feel like they know enough about their organization? Is it giving them everything that they want? And if not. Would would they would they be interested in looking at maybe better operational learning or deeper operational learning, gaining a, a better op, uh, understanding of how work really gets done? And if they're interested, we talk about this all the time. Let's experiment with this. Let's try it out. Pick a site. Let's do this. See if you gain something from it. If you don't, then by all means, stick with what you're doing. So the biggest, I think, well, I shouldn't say this because some companies have totally rolled this out like a program. But the biggest thing I do is I don't treat this like a program. I like to take a site and experiment with this way, this approach, let them do some changes, try some things out, shift their investigations more towards this operational learning approach, and then if they like what they're seeing, and then we already know that some of the best solutions come from our workforce. What's changed in operational learning? What do you wish you would have known two years ago, or what have you learned in the last three years? Oh. Uh, how's, your, how's your thinking around this um, maturing? Uh, I've learned to shut up a lot more and listen a lot more, right? Even my wife has told me I've gotten better at listening and understanding our children. Now, she doesn't say I understand her any better yet. Don't ask for everything. Right? Don't get greedy. I, I don't get greedy. But the fact that I am actually getting maybe a little bit better at, because I'm an engineer, you know that, right? And I always want, I, I love to solve problems and I already have ideas. And so one of the things that has helped me, actually from the very first learning team you and I did around the fork truck, Right? I begin to realize 
maybe I need to wait and not jump to a solution, slow down and learn, right? Slow it down just a notch and actually listen more. Slow down and learn. Yeah. So do you have t-shirts that say that? No, but probably not a bad idea. Yeah, right? no, we, we right. could do that. We could get tattoos like that too. Should we get tattoos? Tattoos are permanent. <laughs> T-shirts last for like, you know, 10 years. Yes, that's right. Or 11, or 12, <laughs> until someone else throws them out. That's right. Throws them out. Yeah, so I think it's helped me the most is to realize how much I need to to focus on learning and um, instead of quickly trying to move to solutions. How do you do that though? How do you, how do you, how did you train yourself to become more fixated on problem identification than solution identification. Just practicing this a bunch. So it's that easy. Yeah, I mean, just do it. Like, like every time I do operational learning, even if it's not like a full blown learning team, I kind of, I kind of have this little mantra that if I haven't reached a level of understanding to where I can honestly look at that work worker or those workers and say, you know what, with everything you just explained to me, first of all, how does this problem not happen all the time? It's probably because they're amazing. And then and second of all, yeah. yep. And second of all, if I haven't reached a level where I can honestly say, oh, man, I get it. I think I'd have done the same thing. Then I think I probably need to keep learning. Because if I say, yeah, but I wouldn't have done what you guys did. I mean, I get what you're saying, but I think I would have done something different. I think that's a bias, right? That's a sort of a fundamental attribution problem that I may have. So I'm going to keep digging and listening and learning until I can say, got it. Now this makes sense. So we had an interesting phenomenon this week during this workshop. We had a couple of leaders that told me on different occasions, I already do this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we already do this. We already do this. We do that. We do something like this. What do you do with that? Because first of all, you know they aren't doing it. I mean, I mean, in the nicest way I can say it, they're clearly not already doing this stuff. How do you help people course correct around to that? Well, what I've done a couple of times is I've said, if you ask your workforce if they would agree with that, I mean, I just ask them. I mean, do you, do you think that we are focused more on blaming and making an example of somebody, or are we focused more on really looking and listening and learning and assuming that the worker isn't the problem, that the worker is actually solving problems and figuring things out? Ask them, I mean, have you asked that question? You know what I get most of the time? Oh, well, almost all the time they say, well, no, we have it. Well, then they're, then they're just giving their, it's a bi it's their own biased opinion that they already do this, right? So if you go and ask your workforce, because guess what you and I do, right? We're, right? we're working with people or we're in learning teams or, or whatever. If we're just out, you know, watching how work happens or talking to people and we hear these very things like, yeah, don't get caught because, I mean, you get, you screw up something here, they're going to write you up or they're going to pull you in the office. Or, so here, it's black line, blue line. They believe they're already doing this. But if I ask the workforce, that's what I want to know. What are they saying? Do you feel guilty because you're charging people to go out and tell them to listen, listen to, to their the workers? Worker. No, because I have to travel so dang far to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer for a bunch of reasons. So what's next? What What are you looking at in the future? What interests you now? Well, so one thing that's really been interesting to me recently is just this um, this um, this notion of accountability. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell me and, more. Yeah, so um, the, the whole idea that I want to hold people accountable versus – this notion of accountability to me is becoming, no, we're, we got to solve this or we're going to make it better. Right? So if you were a part of this and you were involved in this, it's almost the easy button to just write you up or get you out of here. It's harder to say, wait, let's all get in this together, leaders and workers and right together. And let's try to make this better. That's accountability. You don't get to run off. You don't get to go away. I can't just blame you and you can't just leave. That's not accountability. Right? You want to be accountable? Help me solve this. Help me make this better. What else? Anything else you're doing? Like, aren't you working on a book? Well, someone's been pushing me to. So I was trying uh, to hint for you to talk about it, but I had to say it yeah, out loud. Oh yeah, yeah, well, that's because I'm not very good at hints. You can ask my wife that. She'll uh, be hinting something, and I'll look at her and go, what? She's like, I was trying to tell you. Quit talking about that because you're going to hurt their feelings. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, so, yeah, so. They're the people. Yes, yeah, they're the people. You're the ones you're talking about. Um, yeah, so putting together a little book called The uh, Field Guide to Operational Learning. And I don't think it's a little book, but okay. Yeah. I mean, well, it's not like a 500-pager. It's well, yeah. not like Gone with the Wind. Okay. Good. Right? But it's, uh, but I'm hoping that, I mean, I'm just going to share everything we're learning as we're doing this stuff and around how do we do operational learning, what are the challenges, pitfalls, how do we kind of set this stuff up, how do we talk to leaders about it? I mean, all the kind of stuff that we're doing, not because we have... I mean, it's because we're doing it, because we're practicing this, the right sort of practical application of operational learning. And we're going to call it the 
It'll be part of your suite of books, so it'll be, but it'll be called the Field Guide to Operational Learning. And what will it help them do? What, what, what does it accomplish? Mm, solve world hunger. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, fix all the world's problems. Yeah, yeah that kind yeah. of stuff, right? Now, make, make safety great again? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Make safety. And also make sure that there's cookies left when I get home, not just the smell of cookies, that's right? right. Um, no, I think what it'll help them with is the practical application of the very things we're talking about. Because there are some things that we can share with each other that make this a little easier. Maybe take a little of the edge off, maybe give some tips and pointers and, and things like that. It'll, be, it'll have a lot of the information from when we teach the, the operational learning class. A lot of that information will be in there and uh, some examples and some case studies. Uh, it should be a pretty easy read and a pretty fun read and, and uh, definitely writing it to be able to help people out. Sounds good. So what's next? Anything else coming up? Anything exciting? Yeah, yeah. So as, uh, as we go home today, uh, you know, me and my son Kelson are going to go by the uh, exotic car dealership because, you know, he's said many times he wants to grow up and be rich and that he's not going to have kids because they're money takers. <laughs> and so, yeah, so I'm taking one of my money takers. With God, you have a little Ann Rand. <laughs> you gave birth to a little Ann Rand. So, yeah, so me and Kelson are going to stop by and check that out. But what's next in the world of HOP? Has he joined the Republican Party already? So, <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a matter of time. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, so I actually I don't know what's next. I know we're, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. Just everywhere people want our help, just help out and and continue to be generous. You taught me that from the very beginning. Give everything away. Don't worry about it, right? Because people need this. Um, so we just keep doing that. And what's cool about it, and I've even seen this in these workshops that you and I do together, and Mark was here this week, which is awesome, right? Um, is that that it's, it's still keep growing? It's still growing, right? We yeah, can't, we it's totally growing. It's not it's, like it we have me. Yeah. Were you surprised there were people here we didn't know? Yes. Me too. Yeah. I find that surprising. Yeah, it was fun though. Makes it yeah, right. that's totally great. I mean, yeah. it's really fun. Cool. And what about you? What do you think we're doing next? I don't know. It's, so it's hard at the end of the day like this to think yeah. of what to say. But I, mean, I, I think that we'll see more activity around. I think learning is really a key component. I think you guys will be busy a long time doing any kind of learning work. I mean, getting, getting groups to be able to learn is really valuable. Mm, I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to predict. I'm like you. I'm I'm excited that more people are doing stuff. I'm excited more stuff's happening. That's cool. And it's fun to be a part of the journey. Yeah. Right? And it's actually fun to not know. I think it's yeah. Fun. I mean, it's, it really feels a little exploratory. Yeah, no, little, it's, right? it's like totally kind of cool. what's over that next ridge. I don't know. Last words. What advice do you give the world? It's your chance. Yeah. So actually, I heard some great advice from Laura from Spain. Oh, yeah. I say because she's, I mean, this, this is not her native language, right? She came to this workshop. She was at our HOP conference in Houston, too, a year ago. And I did a little video blog with her, and I, and I asked her, I said, so what do you think about the conference? Did we, did we go deep enough? Did we give you enough information? And she's having to take all this stuff and translate it in yeah, her head, right? in real time. You know what she said? She said the coolest thing. She said, I think you gave me enough to get started. Okay. Which is perfect, right? Because yeah. that's all they if, they, if people can just get started, then you'll learn and improve and learn and improve and you'll make some mistakes and you'll learn from those and so that's really encouraging that we gave her enough to go back to Spain and get started. And there you have it. What do you think? It was kind of nice, wasn't it? It's fun. He's so much fun to talk to you that it's um, it's hard to do it wrong. He's just a pleasure. What a, what a nice human being. Very sweet man who really is very stinking good at what he does. He knows operational learning probably better than anybody else I know in the whole world. And he's fun. And he's fun to hang out with. So that was it by request, the Bob and Todd conversation. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll talk again soon, I'm sure. Have as much fun as you uh, possibly can squeeze into you the, the fun meter. I mean, if you can squeeze more, try to. That would be a good idea. Until then, my friends, I learn something new every single day. Have as much fun as you possibly can. I said that twice, didn't I? And for goodness sakes, be safe. Okay, that's the weirdest thing. I thought this thing was a half hour long, and it's only 20 minutes. I totally owe you 10 minutes. Go to the 10-minute bank and get 10 minutes out of petty cash and take it back. Or you know what you could do? Act like you're still listening for another 10 minutes and take a tiny nap. Unless you're driving. That would be dumb. 
But if you're not driving, I think that's a brilliant idea. And uh, and then in 10 minutes, wake up and say, wow, that was an amazing podcast. That was amazing. And you'll get a little 10-minute recreation break. Doesn't that sound good? See, it's a, I'm a full-service podster. That's what I am. Todster the podster. Thanks for listening. See ya. Peace. Sorry it's short. I still love you. Bye.